So this poll... Yeah, I didn't plan to completely ignore what the vote was. I did want to consider it, but some things have come up in my life again where I'm pretty busy, and I wanted to make sure that I could at least get a part out during the weekly schedule I say I will. Let's just say part two hasn't even been written yet, so I'm not close to getting that part out, and I don't want to take another free week break to get it done in one part, because as I saw off my channel, it analytically did a lot worse after that. And it's not that I only care about, you know, how many views I'm getting and how well every video does, but it definitely is a big factor to me. Also on this poll I saw a lot of comments actually saying that they wanted two-parters. I'm not saying you have to comment for your opinion to be validated, like I know a lot of people wanted the one-parter, but because nobody really commented why they preferred one part over two part, I didn't really know what benefits it had to people, so I didn't know why people wanted it, and that just made it like kind of difficult for me to imagine really doing. I do think my next long format video will be one part, but I think after I just took like three weeks to get one video, I don't want to take another three weeks to get this one out. So I think it's also important to mention here that it's not going to be like last time when I uploaded part one and then I uploaded part two within like the 20 minutes. Part two is actually going to take like, you know, another week to come out because I haven't done any work on that yet. Also, sorry if my voice sounds rough, it's uh, I don't know what's happening with it right now. It's pretty bad, but I wanted to try and get this out anyway, so yeah, I'm not going to let it delay my process. And with that said, what if Sierra and Alejandro were an island? If you look at the gender ratios of both teams, then you'll see that Bass has six guys and five girls, and the Gophers have six girls and five guys. So if I were to do it like Alejandro was on this team and Sierra was on this team, then the gender ratio would be even more split, with there being now seven guys here and seven girls there. Like, I can understand when it's like six, five, six, five, because they have an odd number of people like to put on each team, so obviously there has to be a disparity there. But now that the cast numbers are even and the gender ratio is going to be even, I think it makes a lot more sense for Alejandro to be on the Gophers and Sierra to be on the Bass because now we even out the gender ratios. So yeah, that's why they're on those teams. I could consider doing this what if again if they were on the other team since I definitely think that changes a lot of the character dynamics and could make things a lot more interesting, but for this first time around I just wanted to try and focus like heavily on what I think would actually kind of happen, and I definitely don't think that they would make that big of a gender ratio of disparity when they could make it even. That doesn't make sense to me. Cause this isn't like World Tour where like there was a team building challenge that just happened to make it so that Cody was the only boy on a team and Izzy was the only girl on a team. Like this is actually production that made the teams and it would make very little sense for production to decide that one team has slightly more boys and one team has slightly more girls when they can just even it out. But Alejandro, there's a big thing to note here is that Alejandro would arrive on the dock in front of the contestants and everybody would swoon over him, but once Alejandro arrives, he would get more attention. This is kind of a tough thing to like say who would be more attractive and get more attention, Justin or Alejandro, since they both seem to be kind of at equal level of hotness canonically. Both can swoon the other gender and deadly animals pretty easily, but personally I think Justin is designed to be much more of a pretty boy, while Alejandro Alejandro is both physically good looking, but is also just a really good charmer. So in simpler terms, only speaking appearance, I think Justin beats Alejandro, but speaking appearance and charm, Alejandro beats Justin. But since the cast just saw them like based off looks right now, Justin would get more attention than Alejandro. This makes Alejandro a bit worried as he figured that he was going to be able to manipulate everyone with his good looks and quickly start scheming a plan to eliminate Justin soon. Since we saw in World Tour that he obviously focused very heavily in pre-merge of hurting with girls like Bridget, Lashawn, I'm sure I'm missing probably others here. I mean, post-merge it was Courtney, and then even like Hever was a plan for a while until he actually fell in love. But like flirting with girls is very much part of his strategy to like make them mess up. So now that Justin has kind of taken female attention, Alejandro would be a bit worried about that. And some quick things to know of Sierra's debut is that first off, she's clearly not a fan of the show since this is the first season, meaning she wouldn't have any real connections to anybody, or super fan knowledge of the cast, especially a certain person she was creepy and obsessive with. Mm. but would still be a massive Chris super fan, which is part of how she got on the show as Chris made some arrangements for as a host to get her on the season since he likes the attention she gives him. The first challenge in my mind plays out the same since there isn't reason for it not to. Both Alejandro and Sierra seem like people that would jump to shark dive so they would do that and that wouldn't affect the penalties. And as for the dynamics, there isn't anything super big happening during this challenge since there's just a lot of people who don't get screen time and I don't think Sierra and Justin could really do anything like super big in the first episode. They can't like change the entire game. It's the first episode. <laughs> I just imagine that Alejandro is get along with mostly everybody and even grow an interest in Heavy's bossy attitude this episode, but wouldn't say anything. As and I think Sierra, I could definitely imagine Sierra getting along with somebody like Katie and Sadie since they're all like, you know, girly girl, obsessed, boy crazy people. But I think everyone else would either be afraid or annoyed by her and especially since the Bass team is like kind of a more introverted team you look at people like Duncan, Ezekiel, Harold, I guess 
DJ to a degree, like, these people just aren't very talkative. I guess Tyler isn't very talkative either. Like, most people here just, Eva, I think it's just a team that would kind of judge her for being so Chris obsessed since they don't understand why and she just thinks they just think she's weird. And the Gophers would still win the challenge, meaning the Bass have vote somebody off. And the vote has one really big change, and that is that now since the genders are equal on the team, Ezekiel wouldn't give his unique comment about gender, and Courtney was very much the target until Ezekiel had this comment because she was being really bossy and annoying everybody with her mentioning of being a CIT every 10 seconds. And I think the bottom two would be Sierra and Courtney, since both were annoying the team heavily, but since Sierra jumped and Courtney didn't, Courtney would be the first boot of the season. After the elimination ceremony, Alejandro would follow behind Justin and give a glare to the back of Justin's head, before Justin quickly turns around prompting Alejandro to look away acting like he wasn't glaring. But Justin notices the glare and turns around to confront Alejandro and tells him that he's noticed all the glaring at him today and he understands what's going on. Justin thinks Alejandro is jealous because Justin works in modeling and knows what it's like to compete with a bunch of attractive people who are envious of him, and he tells Alejandro that he doesn't want to have to compete with him on the show like that. So Justin tells him that it's cool and he understands that Alejandro was casted on the show for his looks just like Justin, and that they are fighting for the same spot but Justin doesn't want it to be so hostile between them. Alejandro processes all of this and is completely shocked but seeing the opportunity present itself he offers an alliance to Justin saying maybe their beautiful faces should work together. Alejandro does this because he being the smart guy he is, he quickly realizes that Justin is dumb and makes a perfect alliance member for him to manipulate. Plus Alejandro is obviously planning on flirting with girls as strategy like I mentioned earlier and figures that now he can just use Justin as a puppet for that plan instead, so in case it goes wrong, Justin gets targeted and not him. Justin accepts the line since he feels like it's a fun way to bridge their divide, and they both are really similar so Justin would like working with him. Alejandro shakes his hand and goes to bed with a devious grin on his face and in confessional says Justin might have been casted for his pretty face, but I was casted for ruthless strategy and everyone better watch out. Sierra would start off the episode upset that she was almost eliminated, since she said it would be terrible to be eliminated so early and not see more of Chris, showing her mind isn't like fully in the game since she cares more about Chris than, you know, doing well. During the running section, Heather chooses to just walk the distance as she's wearing high heels and doesn't care. Alejandro would walk backwards next to her and strike conversation. It isn't anything super deep or strategic, but Alejandro is intrigued by her so he just takes the time to make small talk. Which is obviously in their aggressive tone similar to World Tour where they both make fun of each other. Alejandro says in a confessional that he would like to keep Heather in the game because she's so rude to everybody that she keeps the target off of his own back moving forward. When it comes to the actual challenge, everything would say the same. Maybe Alejandro could outlast Gwen and Duncan when it comes to staying awake, but I still think Sierra would pass out way before them. And Alejandro is on the same team as Gwen, so either way even if he did outlast them, the Gophers would still win the challenge. Everything that happens during the challenge stays the same as well. Heather stealing Eva's MP3 player and creating alliance with Beth and Lindsay. But I also think Sierra would start bonding with Eva, since they are both shown to have anger problems and Sierra is desperate for friends so she is persistent on trying to befriend Eva. And also Sierra is someone in the show who is never really seen to be afraid of anyone and barely anything, so I definitely think she wouldn't be intimidated by Eva and would want to, you know, work with her. Now when looking at the ratios of guys to girls on the teams, the Bass have more guys than the girls, and the Gophers have equal number of guys to girls, so at first glance it could seem like Ezekiel would make the sexist comment again. However, I think Ezekiel could still count, and he would see that the Bass have less members. And it'd be different if, like, the Bass had less guys than these guys, like if they had five guys and they had six guys. But I don't think them having one less girl would instigate Ezekiel saying the sexist comment. And Eva still got her MP3 stolen and would still go crazy, causing her to get eliminated. Even though Sierra was bonding and talking with Eva, I don't think it'd be enough to stop her from freaking out, and maybe even cause it to happen quicker since she could be genuinely ignoring Eva, which would make her more mad. So yeah, I think that's kind of unavoidable here unless something else happens. When Heifer is talking to Lindsay and Beth in the cafeteria about their alliance, Alejandro would overhear the conversation and quickly figure out about their alliance, but doesn't confront Heather about it and just keeps it to himself for now. I thought that in this episode, Alejandro would flirt with Lashana to make her an ally, since it was seen in World Tour that she was really easy for Alejandro to spoon. But part of his strategy in World Tour was to flirt with the other team to throw them off focus for easy eliminations, and Lashana is on his own team. Also, like I mentioned earlier, Alejandro would like working with Justin, so that Justin can do all the flirting as a safety in case it fails. And also, the whole reason that Alejandro even targeted Lashana in specific was that he he saw her from the past season she was in and how dominant she was, and considered her a threat moving forward. But since this is the first season, he wouldn't really know that she's like that good of a player. During the challenge, Sierra would see Cody in round one and start to, you know, don't worry yet. <laughs> Because it isn't nearly as potent or creepy as it was in season 3 because they haven't even had a conversation yet. But it would still start to happen since Sierra would think Cody's cute. And even though Courtney isn't here to wake up Duncan, I think Sierra would be able to convince the team to do it or at the very least do it herself. Because as I said earlier with Eva, she's not really seen to be afraid of like anyone. So she would bite the bullet and wake up Duncan, resulting in the bass being able to take it back, you know 
Duncan does his plan, they win the first two rounds, and then Harold comes at the end with his finger skating and he wins the last round. And this is an important thing that changes the plot, but I decided to have Alejandro and Harold be the final two in the last round, and for Harold to be Alejandro. Not only do I think this would make Harold's comeback more impressive since Alejandro has been dominant in every challenge so far, but Alejandro would also freak out and feel shame for losing, because he can already imagine the ridicule he will face from his older brother Jose, which is a nice natural setup for a future episode. And I imagine the votes play are the exact same since Noah still would have been dismissive during the challenge and rubbed the team the wrong way. And I don't really think anybody else here could be a target, nor would like Alejandro or Heather have a reason to like get somebody else voted out since, you know, why would they? <laughs> Heather would still take over as team leader on the go through since Alejandro wouldn't want that responsibility as it makes himself a target if they lose. And unlike Team Chris is really hot in World Tour, the team isn't too bad so we would have no reason to properly take over. Gwen would still not approve of Heather being leader and need to take a break by herself in the woods. Cody this time would go to approach Gwen, but as he does this, Sierra would cut him off, striking a conversation with Cody. Cody tries to nicely dismiss her since he's going to talk with Gwen, and they are both on different teams so they shouldn't be seen talking to each other. Sierra is a bit more respectful in this universe since again, she isn't fully psycho about him, but she's still nutty and is oblivious to Cody's rejection, and Sierra distracts Cody long enough that Gwen just ends up leaving before Cody has a chance to talk to her, which makes Cody annoyed at Sierra. Heather is able to still do all the things to Gwen, you know, by getting her to go away and then steals her diary and whatnot with Lindsay's help. After Heather gets Gwen's diary, Alejandro goes to confront her and tells her that he knows everything about the alliance with Beth and Lindsay. Heather tries to deny it, but Alejandro tells her to calm down and that he isn't going to use it against her, and in fact thinks that he can help her out. Since Heather has had some troubles with keeping Lindsay in line because she keeps going off of Tyler, Alejandro tells her that he could try to convince Justin to flirt with Lindsay to intimidate Tyler, and all five of them, Lindsay and Beth, and Justin could work together as an alliance of five. Heather is a bit hesitant as increasing the size of the alliance complicates things, but doesn't see a downside to what Alejandro is suggesting, so she agrees and when she goes to shake his hand, she accidentally uses the hand that is holding Gwen's diary, which gives Alejandro the chance to see it. Heather tells Alejandro her plan to read it in front of everybody, and Alejandro likes the dirty play, but tells Heather that it would be bad and would put a target on her back, and gives a different suggestion that he whispers in her ear. Now to the actual challenge, for the Gophers, the three I see competing for the talent show are Justin, Trent, and Heather. So it's still the same since Heather was the team leader and assigned them all, so not reason for that to change. And for Bass, I think it would be DJ, Bridget, and Jeff. And again, it's it's also the same. I figured that everyone originally was impressed by Bridget's skill except for Courtney, but Courtney isn't here anymore so Bridget would get put in. First four acts play out the same, Justin does good, DJ does bad, Trent does okay, and Bridget does poorly. And Heather would again read Gwen's diary, but instead of it just saying that Gwen has a crush on Trent, Heather keeps reading and says some disturbing lines. Of Gwen stalking Trent while he sleeps and keeping time logs of how long he goes to places and creepy lines about how upset she is with him. This makes everyone shocked at how creepy Gwen is and Gwen tries to insist that none of that is true, but Heather just retorts saying that it's in her diary. Gwen looks over to Trent in shame while Trent looks away deeply disturbed. It's revealed later that this was all part of Alejandro's suggestion saying that she should write fake lines in the diary to put the target on Gwen, and it's mostly believable since in the first couple of episodes Gwen is really booty, like really, really distant to people, so everyone would believe that Gwen really wrote all that down since she hasn't really had a chance to show her friendlier side. Jeff would still accidentally break his skateboard, causing Harold to go in his place, and win the challenge for bats by beatboxing. Alejandro would tell Justin about the deal he made with Heather, and after the challenge, Justin would flirt with Lindsay, saying that he really appreciated her cheering during his performance. Lindsay would get flustered by the comment and thank Justin while giggling. Tyler sees Lindsay with Justin and gets sad as he thought that they had something special and feels like a fool. The vote on the Gophers would pretty safely be Gwen, because of what Heather did. It's completely possible that somebody like Cody wouldn't be tricked and throw his vote onto Heather, but he's the only one I could possibly see that wouldn't fall for it, so I think the vote would be a 9-2 vote and Gwen is eliminated. Alejandro would begin the episode by talking with Justin, telling him that he needs him to help him out, and wants him to go talk with Katie and Sadie to make a bond so that they can have an alliance down the road. Alejandro does this because even though he's working with Heather, he doesn't fully trust her and wants another separate alliance for just him and Justin. Alejandro chooses Katie and Sadie specifically since they both seem very easy to manipulate as people who would swoon over Justin very easily. Justin would be a bit hesitant worrying about getting caught talking to the other team, but Alejandro says he'll cover for him during the challenge and Justin goes over to talk with Katie and Sadie. He doesn't suggest an alliance yet since it's too early, but does make small talk with them as they both act like total simps for him. Once Justin finishes talking with them, he realizes that he doesn't know his way back to his team and Katie and Sadie obviously get lost on their own originally, so now all three of them would get lost together. Tyler would be a bit sad seeing Lindsay, I remember last episode seeing her with Justin and thinking she's not interested in him, so he kinda gives up on flirting with her. Lindsay kinda notices that 
Tyler isn't talking to her, but doesn't engage further with it since she knows Heather would get mad at her if she sees her talking to Tyler. Cody would be on high alert from the situation last episode and thinks that it's possible that Heather framed Gwen to get her out of the game. But since he doesn't have any proof of that at the moment, he doesn't confront Heather, so that would be dumb to let her know that he's suspicious if he can't do anything yet. Chet would be bummed going through the words during the challenge as he really thought Gwen was cool and he couldn't believe that she actually turned out to be such a creep. Heather comforts Trent, telling him that she knows what she did was harsh, but she was just trying to protect him from her. Trent thanks her while Cody watches from behind, getting even more suspicious. Sierra would once again walk off from her team to talk with Cody, and this time Cody is a bit nicer since he feels a bit bad about how rude he was yesterday, and Sierra forgives him. He realizes as he talks to her that she would be perfect to help him out, because in the first episode, Cody was seen heading over to the girl's side of the cabin and was thrown out, so I imagine he's kind of banned from going to the girl's side of the cabin. But Sierra would be able to go to the gopher's girl's side and sneak in without causing too much suspicion, and even if she does, the gophers can't exactly vote her out, since she's on the other team. So Cody tells her everything about how he feels fishy from the Heather and Gwen situation, and it would mean a lot to him if, if she could investigate the gophers female side. Sierra seeing this as a good opportunity to get on Cody's good side agrees to help him out. The gophers would get their camping spot and Heather would point out that Justin isn't there and Alejandro would realize that he probably got lost but there isn't much he could do as of right now so he would just make an excuse for him saying that he probably had to go pee or something. The best side would play out the same, Duncan tells his carry story, Bridget accidentally burns a tent, and nothing new to talk about. Justin would kinda just be around while Katie and Sadie break into a fight, and eventually they'd hide in the cave for the night. Originally during the fight, Katie calls herself prettier than Sadie, which upsets Sadie. This will be relevant later, so yep. Later when they are in the cave, Justin senses the tension, and he's never been a good emotional helper, but knows that he needs them to stay together for a future alliance to work. So he distracts them with his good look, getting them the bond again for mutual happiness of seeing Justin. Now because all the bear stuff would still happen with the gophers, this fortunately for Alejandro would keep the group distracted and nobody would really notice that Justin is still missing. As I said before, bass interactions would play out mostly the same, but once everyone has fallen asleep, Sierra would sneak away to go back to the girls cabin. She looks through the stuff but can't find anything incriminating on Heather, but what she does find is Gwen's diary. Since we know in the show that nobody is allowed to collect their belongings before they're eliminated, Gwen wouldn't be able to collect her diary before she's eliminated so it would still be in the cabin. And she rereads over it and reads the creepy lines that Heather said in the talent show here, but Sierra would examine the handwriting very closely and notice that they are different. This isn't enough to prove that Heather had anything to do with it, but it does shine some light that Gwen was potentially framed. And with this, she heads back to the Bass camp with this knowledge. Come morning, the gophers finally notice that Justin is gone and Alejandro tells them to head back to the camp and that he will go look for Justin. Justin wakes up with Katie and Sadie, but Sadie is still asleep as Katie talks to Justin. They have a genuine conversation and Katie tells them that she feels bad lashing out at Sadie yesterday saying she was prettier than Sadie. Justin defends Katie saying it isn't her fault because she is prettier than Sadie. Katie gets flustered and asks Justin why he thinks she's prettier than Sadie. Justin says that Sadie just isn't that pretty and her frame isn't very attractive. Katie gets extremely offended that she does think her best friend Sadie is pretty and thinks it's rude for Justin to point out her weight. This commotion wakes up Sadie as Katie tells her what happened and both Katie and Sadie gang up on Justin for his comment. Justin defends himself saying it's not his fault that Sadie let herself go. Both girls gasp with Katie kicking Justin in never regions. The bear comes back from the camp and just puts an arm around Justin's shoulder as the bear feels bad for Justin for the nut shot. Katie and Sadie run back to the camp from the side of the bear. Alejandro comes to get Justin and sees that he didn't do very well at recruiting Katie and Sadie into an alliance, but just focuses on getting Justin back to the camp before the gophers lose. Katie and Sadie show up before them and the gophers think they lost the challenge as Justin and Alejandro come up shortly after, but Chris reveals to the contestants that the gophers win the challenge as everyone gasps. Chris pulls up a tip from the cameraman that Sierra went back to the cabins during the night and the biggest rule of camping is sleeping in nature so going back to the cabins was against the camping spirit. The bass all look at Sierra, extremely ignored as the gophers celebrate. Now looking at this vote, it seems pretty clear that Sierra would be targeted, but look at the genders. One, two, three, four, five, six guys, four girls. One, two, three, four, five, five boys, five girls. I think you see what I'm getting at here. Now that the numbers of the team are even, but the bass had more guys, Ezekiel would have his insightful comment, causing the girls to get really mad at him. Bridget would meet with all the girls to recruit them against Ezekiel since she wouldn't want to vote out Sierra now, another girl, because the guys' numbers would increase even more which scares her because of Ezekiel's comment. Katie and Sadie agreed originally and would still agree in this world, and Sierra would go with any plan to save herself. Bridget and Jeff have a pretty decent connection, so she could definitely convince him to vote out Ezekiel, and DJ is someone I imagine not being okay with Ezekiel's comment at all, and also vote for him, meaning Ezekiel would get voted out. After the vote, Sierra would meet up with Cody and tell her about the diary and how it seems like 
different handwriting and that it's possible Gwen was framed. Cody feels good about this since now his theory is actually somewhat solidified. He also gives Sierra a hug as a thanks for what she did since she did almost get eliminated because of it. Sierra hugs Cody back even harder, making it hard for Cody to breathe. Now there are some new people for this phobia factor challenge, so I had to take a rough guess of what I think their fears would be. Katie would definitely agree with Sadie and Lindsay and be afraid of bad haircuts. Justin would be similar, but I think he's so vain that he can't even imagine himself as not pretty, so his fear would be wearing ugly clothes. Alejandro would be his older brother Jose. And Sierra is the hardest since I really don't think she's ever seen being afraid of almost anything like I've said plenty of times now, but like what is her phobia supposed to be? But I figured since I have the knowledge of her being a Chris super fan, then it would be something in that area of just like her being afraid of Chris getting hurt. Now I talked about this in my last video and I think it would still happen, and that is that I don't think Duncan would reveal his fear to the group. Since his softer side in the first few episodes mainly only came out around Courtney, so he would be pretty jaded and wouldn't want to stun his social standing in the group as saying his fear of a cardboard cutout. And when it comes to the challenge, I'm going to first talk about the key plot things that will happen during the challenge and then I'll talk Talk about the actual points. Justin would struggle wearing the ugly clothes, feeling like his appearance is getting worse, which is the core of his fear. While he's having this emotional conflict, he would run into Katie, who is displeased with seeing him, but sees how distressed he looks from being ugly and kind of feels bad for him. So she goes to cheer him up by showing him her ugly hair, saying that he still looks great. Justin smiles at her and even feels good when Katie smiles back at him. Justin has a confessional saying that he felt something weird when talking with Katie, like a spark, and not a she's cute spark, but a she's amazing spark. Justin realizes what he said and feels really bad about what he did last episode and wants to make things up with her. Lindsay would try approaching Tyler, but Tyler just kind of ignores her, not in like a mean way, but he just tries to avoid talking to her since he still remembers what happened with Justin, and he doesn't want to risk talking to her and letting himself fall for her again. This hurts Lindsay as she's confused why Tyler doesn't want to talk to her, but Heather quickly finds her trying to talk with Tyler and scolds her, causing Lindsay to stop the train of thought for a bit. Alejandro would have a fight off against Jose, but now that this isn't set seasons later where Jose is able to fire up Alejandro by bringing up Heather, I think Alejandro would lose. As Jose grabs Alejandro's head and whispers very pathetic Al, and Sierra wouldn't be able to overcome her fear of seeing Chris get hurt, as Chris would hang his bare foot over a pine cone threatening to step on it, but every time he gets close, Sierra freaks out. Chris even tells her to calm down as it isn't that big of a deal, but she still loses it, saying her mom would kill her if she let him get hurt. And now for the actual points. Katie and Sadie would both get a point for being able to get through the haircut together, Lindsay would also get a point for this. Justin, with Katie's help, would be able to get past his fear. Owen and Izzy were able to get past their fear of flying in a plane. Heather would get a point for fighting a sumo wrestler. Beth overcame her fear of being covered in bugs. Trent overcame his fear of mimes, and everyone else failed. Meaning that the Gophers have the lead, but like the original, Chris would say they have one more challenge, one more fear to do which is Duncan's. Duncan is against even bothering to do it since he knows that even if he won, he it wouldn't be enough to win the challenge, since the Gophers have 7 points and they only have 2. But Chris would give the same incentive he gave to Courtney in the original, saying that if he can overcome his fear, then he will give the best a win. I talked about this in my last video, and I know a lot of people would say that Duncan wouldn't be able to overcome his fear since Courtney isn't here to help anymore. But if you rewatch the clip, Courtney helps Duncan by being really nice and supportive, which I definitely feel that people like Bridget, or even like Jeff and DJ, could do just as well if not better than Courtney. Courtney. And Courtney even tells him that it's okay if he can't do it, which makes me believe that Duncan overcoming his fear was more of a personal growth thing that was always possible within him. Meaning, the Bass win the challenge. Now, looking at the vote, it's definitely hard to tell who gets targeted since there wasn't a main person who messed up during the challenge. I think both Cody and Lashana would vote for Heather, since she's been a pain for both of them, and Cody still has his working theory on her. I think Owen, Izzy, and Trent vote for Cody, since he's kind of a liability, and the Alliance of Five is the real big toss-up here. But the three potential targets I see for them are Cody, Owen, and Izzy. Lashana is safe because even though Heather hates her, she's still a valuable asset to the team with her strength, and Heather manipulated Trent to think she was helping him, so there's not much reason to vote him out if he thinks that she's on his side. And out of these three, I think Alejandro convinces the Alliance to vote out Owen, since this was an episode where he fought Jose, called him Al, which annoyed him, and I haven't really mentioned it, but I do think Owen would have still been doing that, and a bunch of other things that annoyed Alejandro. And unlike World Tour, where Alejandro kept Owen for a while because he was easy to manipulate, he doesn't really need Owen this season. He's already working in an alliance of five, so Owen isn't essential to Alejandro's game anymore. And Alejandro has a lot of sway, and I do think he'd be able to convince the alliance to vote for Owen, talking about how dumb he acted in the last challenge, and had to make him deal with a bear all night, so he's a bigger liability to the team. For the first part of the challenge, the teams have to make canoe paddling duos, and so considering the new dynamics, here's what I think the groups would be. For the Gophers, Izzy and Lashana would still go together, since they're both still here. Alejandro would take Heather, and Heather would agree, but tell him he's gotta do all the paddling, which Alejandro's fine with. And Lindsay and Beth would both pull Justin into a canoe 
avenue like how they originally do with Trent, but they do with Justin now since he's hotter. And Cody would take Trent since he wants to talk to him about the Gwen situation. For the Bass, there's Katie and Sadie, easy duo right there. Bridget is somewhat tight with Sierra since the Bass girls have an unofficial alliance, so they would go together so Bridget can avoid going with Jeff because the bad gift that Jeff gives her would still happen. And this would have DJ and Jeff still go together, and then Duncan, Harold, and Tyler all being left would go together. I'm just gonna put these three here so that everything else lines up. During the canoe ride, there are some events that would happen. First off, Bridget would confide in Sierra about the gift that Jeff gave, but being the mega stalker weirdo that Sierra is, she would probably think that it isn't that bad and would even say in reference a creepy flirty thing she did with Cody to get him to like her, since she has a crush on him. Bridget at first would have a long pause asking why Cody. Sierra would say yes in an offended tone. Bridget gets the aggression and drops the questioning, but tells Sierra that poach doesn't work for love and it's too aggressive. It would be the same talk DJ gave to Jeff saying that love is like feeding a bunny and you want to let the bunny come to you. So it'd be like a split screen with Bridget giving the talk to Sierra and DJ giving the talk to Jeff at the same time. This puts some things in perspective for Sierra. She's obviously still nuts, but she's aware now that maybe she should respect Cody's boundaries more. Lindsay would try tanning by laying in Justin's lap, but Justin would tell her no as Katie and Sadie rode by them. Justin would rave to them and Katie would completely ignore him. Justin has a confessional saying that he hoped after yesterday that maybe Katie forgave him, but it seems like it was a one-time thing, so he needs to figure out an actual way to apologize. Alejandro and Heather notice Justin pushing Lindsay off of him and is a bit worried that Justin seems to not be flirting with Lindsay like the plan was to keep her away from Tyler. Heather gets a little mad at Alejandro, but he tells her to calm down and that he'll figure it out later. Cody tries to talk to Trent about Gwen, but the mere mention of her name instantly makes Trent tell him to shut up, and that if he says her name again, he'll knock him off the boat. Cody gulps and decides to bring it up later on land so he can run away from him if Trent tries to beat him up. The running to the other side of the Boney Island part would remain the same. Seeing the stole no for later is that Cody would still save Trent and Lindsay with his vine swing while they sink into quicksand. For the fire making part of the challenge, Beth would still find the Tiki Idol and she would still would have been in the bathroom for the beginning of the episode when Chris explained the curse, so she would not know and she would take the Tiki statue. Alejandro would confront Justin about why he pushed Lindsay away when he's supposed to be flirting with her to keep them good in the alliance. Justin explains that he doesn't want to flirt for manipulation anymore and he's not budging on this stance. Alejandro senses a level of stubbornness in Justin, so trying to not upset Justin tells him that it's fine and that he doesn't really need to do it anymore since it already seems like Tyler is giving up on Lindsay, so the problem resolved itself. But Alejandro questions Justin if there's a reason why he's so stubborn to flirt for anyone else while pointing at Katie. Justin pauses and before he can answer, Alejandro just tells him to make sure that he keeps his mind in the game. Cody would now find the time to talk to Trent about Gwen again, and Cody uses the fact that he saved Trent earlier from Quicksand to tell Trent that he owes him for that and to just hear him out for a bit. Trent accepts that he would probably be dead in Quicksand if it wasn't for Cody and decides he'll hear him out for a bit. Cody tells Trent that he thinks Gwen was famed and that she never did any of that. Trent gets annoyed with Cody telling him that it was in her diary and she was clearly a creep towards him. Cody tells him that there's no way Gwen would have done that, and Trent quickly asks Cody why he knows that. And Cody tells him that he guess he doesn't. He doesn't really have anything solid proof that she didn't, but he knows the girl he met for the couple of days she was here, and she didn't give that creepy weirdo stalker vibe. Cody turns the focus back on Trent with a question of his own, asking him if the girl he met during the few days seemed like that to him. Trent realizes that he did bond pretty well with Gwen during those first few days, and she did seem like a cool girl. Obviously he isn't fully convinced yet, but he agrees with Cody saying that even if there's a 5% chance that Gwen was framed, then Trent should investigate with Cody. Cody tells Trent that he's proof he'll show him when they get back to the camp to help them start the investigation. Alejandro overhears the conversation and worries that they'll catch onto his trail so he knows he has to deal with this later. And from here, the rest of the challenge plays out the same. Harold burns the bass paddles, Izzy tells them about having someone push the canoes back, DJ does that, and the bass win the challenge. Once Alejandro gets back to the island, he quickly runs into the girl's cabin to get Gwen's diary and burns it so Cody has no evidence, since he figured that was probably the thing that Cody was talking about with the evidence, so there's not really anything else he could have. So he burns that just to be safe. Later when Cody gets Trent and also Sierra so he can show Trent the diary, Sierra can't seem to find it and tells them. Cody is shocked, but Trent just thinks that Cody was lying to him, but instead of getting angry, he just walks off annoyed since he's really upset about the Gwen situation and doesn't even have the energy to be mad at Cody. Cody is really upset that this happened, and Sierra would want to comfort him, saying that he tried to best. Now I imagine up to this point Sierra has been insistent on getting something from Cody when she helps him. I'm not going to say it's something super creepy because again this is the earlier stage of them knowing each other, but she still is bored crazy and would like to do things with him. So up till this point I'm going to say that Sierra had a deal that she got to hold hands of Cody for 20 seconds when she did something for him. And because Cody is pretty passive about resisting Sierra, he would have allowed this to happen during the past episodes. And even though Sierra couldn't find the diary, Cody still puts his hand out telling Sierra that she still tried to help him so she can get her payment of holding his hand. Sierra reaches for his hand but remembers what Bridget said about being more respectful to Cody and letting him come to her. So Sierra 
Sarah tells Cody that they can stop doing it if it makes him feel uncomfortable and that she really just wants to help him more than anything. Cody is surprised by her change of heart and even feels nice hearing that she just likes to help him. And after a couple awkward seconds, he asks if he can hold her hand since he kind of wants to now. Sierra smiles warmly and puts a hand out in front of him as an offer that Cody takes. And Sierra has a confessional where she's giggling from excitement. This vote is a bit of an odd one. First off, I imagine that Alejandro would have talked to Heather about Cody being suspicious from the Gwen situation. Heather would be scared and say they should get rid of him for the night and Alejandro agrees that the little guy is becoming more dangerous than they thought. So Alejandro and Heather would go around telling the Alliance of Five to vote for Cody, and in a five free vote, Cody is eliminated. Well, he's almost eliminated. See, Izzy got chased down by the RCMP at the end of this episode, making her get eliminated. And even though it seemed like she was the vote anyway, there's not much Chris could really do to get Izzy back on the show at that very second when she runs off. So Chris would accept that Izzy ran off and got herself eliminated and called it a night. Meaning that Cody wouldn't have to be sent away because Chris can't have two people eliminated in the same episode. That just messes up the numbers moving forward and it's also unfair that the Gophers lose two people in one round. Justin would catch Katie while she's outside and pull her into a nearby bush. At first she's confused, but Justin tells her that he just wanted to tell her that he's really sorry for what he said and that he really likes her and would like it if they could start over. Katie is a bit upset at Justin, but does like him and says she likes him too, but what he said was really mean and if he should be giving anyone an apology, it's Sadie. And Katie tells Justin that he needs to be able to smooth things over with Sadie before they can do anything, since Sadie is her best friend and she needs to know that he's really sorry and not just saying this. Justin tells her that he promises he'll fix things with her and he'll get back to her when she does. Katie smiles and says that's good and she'll be waiting for him. Sierra, after the elimination ceremony, jumps into Bridget, thanking her for helping her with Cody. Bridget slowly pushes Sierra off of her and says she's happy for her, and wishes she could have similar luck while looking at Jeff's gift. Sierra looks at the gift, now understanding more why it's bad, but tells Bridget that until today, she was also pushy when it comes to love, and sure that gift is terrible, but it still shows that Jeff is really into her, and maybe she'll think less about what the gift is, and more about what the gift means. Bridget is shocked by her insightful comment, and once Sierra is taken away by Katie and Sadie so they can discuss boys, because they're happy that Sierra made progress with Cody, Bridget picks up Jeff's gifts and smiles while looking at it. For the challenge, there are hunters assigned to both teams. The selection is basically random as Chris just hands them out, but everyone that was a hunter is still here, so I decided that they would still be hunters, which means that for the bass, Harold, Jeff, and Bridget would be hunters, and for the gophers, Beth, Lindsay, and Lashana are hunters. Both teams now need at least one extra hunter to make up for the extra numbers we have, so I randomly spun a wheel to decide who from each team would take a hunter role, and Sadie won for the bass, and Hever won for the gophers. Obviously all the stuff of Hever bossing around Beth would still happen this episode, but it's unchanged so there's no reason to talk about it. Justin would go off to talk with Sadie, but Sadie is still mad about what happened and doesn't believe that he's genuine, so she bosses him around to make her life easier for this challenge to see if he's really willing. Trent would pull Cody aside as Deers and say that he's ready to help him figure out the Gwen situation since last episode Izzy was the clear target but Cody was voted out for no reason. And that plus the diary mysteriously disappearing makes him believe that someone is out there to get Cody because he's catching on to something. Cody is happy to hear this but is still down since the diary was his only real proof and they know that they need proof before they go try to tell other people. Since Heather and Alejandro could easily turn it around on them since they already have an alliance of five which holds the majority on the team so they need actual proof to convince people like Beth and Lindsay that you know, they did something wrong. When Lindsay is out collecting berries for Heather, she sees Tyler and decides to go talk to him. Tyler cowers as she walks towards him because he thinks she's going to shoot him given that she's a hunter and he's a deer, and even mentions this to her but she tells him that she isn't going to shoot him. Tyler starts to walk away with reassurance that she won't shoot him but Lindsay follows him trying to ask why he's been avoiding her. Tyler turns around and looks Lindsay in the eyes, saying that he saw her with Justin and he gets it, Justin is hot and Tyler's not, but Tyler is really into her so he can't talk to her like they're just friends so he just doesn't want to be around her right now. Lindsay is shocked but quickly pulls Tyler's hand as he tries to walk again, reassuring him that she likes him. Sure, she thinks Justin is cute, but she thinks Tyler's cuter, and if it really makes him this uncomfortable, then she promises she won't let him flirt with her. Tyler smiles, asking if she really means it, and Lindsay nods her head. Lindsay leans in for a kiss, but Tyler blocks her lips, asking about Heather, and how Tyler doesn't want to negatively impact her position in the alliance. Lindsay says that Heather probably wouldn't like her being with him, but Heather isn't here right now. Tyler catches the drift and pulls her into a kiss. Cody and Trent catch Beth as she's walking her chips back to Heather and tries to convince her that Heather framed Gwen. Beth is anti-Heather right now because of how bossy she is and is shocked by the premise that Cody and Trent suggest, but even Beth wouldn't think that Heather is that diabolical because, well, she isn't. Only Alejandro is sick enough to come up with that, but he's been playing the social game really well and keeping the target off his back, so Beth says that if they're making a claim that heavy, then they need a little bit more than just a fury to back it up. Trent gets upset, feeling that maybe he's looking into everything too much and tells Cody that he needs to take a walk by himself for a bit, meaning Cody goes off into the woods with the 
the chips. Justin is still sucking up to Sadie, acting like a servant to her, but eventually he snaps and says she's being unreasonable and he's doing everything he possibly can to make it up to her. So if she isn't going to forgive him, then she can just say it now. Sadie gets an order of Justin and tells him that she was never going to give him a chance to fix what he did. He said something really mean to her and he never knows what it's like to be judged for how you look. Justin pauses for a second processing what she said before saying he does. He works in the model industry and it's a toxic place with everyone trying to out pretty each other. There are plenty of times he doesn't feel like he looks good enough compared to them. Sadie listens and says that's exactly how she feels about the girls at her school and even with Katie. She always kind of knows that she's less pretty than Katie and everyone judges her for it. So hearing Justin actually say it in the camping episode, Justin finishes her thought by saying it confirmed her self-doubt. Sadie nods and Justin sincerely apologizes to her saying that what he said about her was stupid and it doesn't matter what anyone looks like because she's a good friend and a good person. And they both pull each other in for a hug, making amends. While Cody is going off into the woods, Sierra pops out of a bush to talk with him. Cody is happy to see her since she's been an enjoyable presence ever since she stopped acting so pushy towards him. While they are talking, the bear that originally attacked Cody would show up again, but Sierra is still a nutsy person and there's no way she would let Cody get hurt by the bear and I think she's crazy enough to attack the bear. And there is some merit to say that Sierra could beat the bear, but come on, it's a bear. <laughs> the bears are very strong and I don't think I really need to say that. I know in World Tour she was able to beat a group of monkeys by herself, but she also wasn't going around punching lions. There has to be a limit of what Sierra's strength can really accomplish and winning a fight against an at least 400 pound night for the creature with a jaw the size of her head is that limit. She would be able to hold the bear off long enough for Cody to escape to get help, but she would still be pretty badly messed up like Cody in the original. And I do think the gophers would lose the challenge because of the entire fire of Hever and everybody getting shot during that, but I think Sierra would be medically acquitted since we saw that can happen in the show in All Stars of Kamen and I think it would happen with Sierra. I know it didn't technically happen to Cody in the original, but his team lost so I think Chris in the production figured he would have been voted out anyways. So Cody would take her to the dock and thank her for her sacrifice, saying she's a hero and he owes her one big time. Sierra tells him that he isn't indebted to her, and if he feels like he is, then he can make it up to her by waiting for both of them. Cody smiles as he says he promises he will and gives Sierra a kiss on the cheek. And if you don't believe that Sierra would be medically evacuated, in Chris's recap next episode talking about this one, he refers to Cody's elimination as a medevac, which is pretty damning evidence that he was going to be removed probably no matter what for his injuries. The start of the episode with the Bass Boys aligning against Harold to teach him a lesson is something I very much still see happening. Tyler is a bit of a toss-up of whether he joined on this, but given that DJ did, I think it's safe to say that he would, since DJ is the purest human alive, so I definitely could see Tyler joining in on this. However, I do think it wouldn't be a main thing of Tyler, he'd like help like one time, because he's mainly busy with sneaking around with Lindsay more. In Ghost Cabin, Katie and Sadie would be excited over Katie getting her first boyfriend, as her and Justin made it official last night. Bridget hears the talk of Justin and tells the girls that can't happen. Both Katie and Sadie are shocked, since Bridget is usually pretty chill, but Bridget got worried after losing Sierra last night and watching the girls' numbers dwindle. She's on edge and that it's a matter of time before they are next. Sadie and especially Katie look a bit down, but agree that they shouldn't let Justin interfere with the game. I think the head chefs for both teams remain the same. Hever and Jeff. And Hever is signing the pairs and make sure to put them together in the best pairs for her line. So she does Justin and Beth. She puts Justin with her to keep an eye on Beth since she's shown signs of deviating against Hever, so she doesn't want her with someone like Lashana who would support Beth in that decision. Lindsay and Alejandro. Hever noticed that Lindsay seems loyal but kind of slacking lately, so she puts her with Alejandro and tells Alejandro to figure out why she seems unmotivated. Which I guess leaves Cody, Trent, and Lashana together since they are uneven numbers so they work as one big group. And Jeff's leadership is much nicer and allows everyone to choose who they want to work with, so Bridget and DJ would still happen. Katie and Sadie are a given, and then Duncan, Harold, and Tyler are left, which I think works since Duncan would want to be around Harold to have more chances to mess with him during the day, and Tyler would want to be in the bigger group because he plans on sneaking off during the challenge a couple times with Lindsay, so in a bigger group he might be able to sneak away easier being undetected. Tyler says in a confessional that Lindsay and him are all good now but they still have to sneak off to kiss so Heather doesn't catch on. Lindsay says it's kind of fun to sneak around, but it's also really scary to know that she might get caught. While Alejandro and Lindsay are working together, Lindsay finds an excuse to back out of the kitchen and she winks at Tyler indicating for him to go out too. Alejandro clearly notices this since he's working with her and sneaks out to follow them. They go to a nearby bush to make out but Alejandro interrupts them causing them both to get scared and ask him to not tell Heather about this. Alejandro tells them that he would hate to get in the way of love and says that his lips are sealed as long as they both promise to pay him back the favor down the line. They both agree and Alejandro walks off telling them that he'll buy them some time. Alejandro walks back into the kitchen and Heather instantly confronts him asking what he
he was doing slacking. And he tells her to calm down and that he was just stretching before Heather pulls him back into the kitchen to do work. Alejandro has a confessional saying that he could have told Heather about Lindsay and Tyler, but why would he do that? He knows he's working with Heather right now, but at some point he's gonna cut her loose so she doesn't have to know everything about what Alejandro is doing. Justin flashes some smiles to Katie while he's working happily that they are dating now, but anytime he flashes her some looks, Katie awkwardly smiles back or just ignores him because of what Bridget said earlier. Justin is confused since he thought they were finally on good terms. Katie has a confessional saying it's really hard to not get distracted by Justin during the challenge, but she does want to listen to Bridget so she's firm on not letting him distract her as she starts listing off things she likes about Justin gushing about him, but slaps herself and tells herself to pull it together. Bridget and Jeff would still not be going the best with Justin not being very smooth or flirting, but it would be going even worse since Bridget is trying to focus on the game and not Jeff because of the talk she had with the girls. Cody and Trent would be talking discreetly with Lashana about their theory of Heather, but she would mostly react the same way as Beth, saying that even though Heather is cold-hearted, she's not diabolical. It is possible that she did it, but they need proof before they go around saying that. Lashana asks them if they have even considered anyone else. Both Trent and Cody look at each other, asking Lashana to clarify, and Lashana tells them that anyone could have done it, really. Everyone here benefits from Gwen being voted out that round since it means they aren't being voted out, and it's clear that Gwen and Trent were going to become a dangerous pair. Cody and Trent hadn't even thought of this, but Lashana pulls them in while pointing at all the people on the Gophers team and even the Bass team. Alejandro overhears their conversation while pretending to do work. Going through the whole team, they would give a short analysis of why each person could have done it. Beth is shown to be board crazy and could have been jealous of someone else getting a boyfriend while she's left alone. This is supported by her showing interest in both Justin, and at some points in the show, Trent, Justin, obsessed with looks and has times where he's flirted with the competition, could have seen that he wouldn't be able to flirt with Gwen since she was falling for Trent, so decided to take her out of the equation. Heather, Gwen earlier that day had shown dis disinterest in Heather being the leader of the team, maybe Heather took her out so that she wouldn't be a threat to her as a leader. Alejandro, shown to be incredibly smart and could have just seen getting rid of Gwen as furthering his own game, but since Alejandro has done such a splendid job of being nice to everybody and clearly a very strong team player, he wouldn't have much reason to try and get rid of Gwen so urgently because he's not in any danger. And Lindsay is seen twirling her hair around and doing something stupid as they are about to analyze her, which lets them all know that there's no way she could have done something this smart. Cody quickly connects some dots and lowers suspicion on Beth, saying that Trent and him talked to her yesterday about Heather doing it, and Beth lightly protected Heather, which wouldn't make sense if Beth was the one who did it, since she would be more than happy to pin it on Heather. Lashana agrees that makes sense, but tells them both to calm down a bit since it's also possible that Gwen was just a weirdo, or even that someone on the Bass team did it, so jumping to conclusions could cause them to wrongly convict someone. Alejandro, who's been hearing this entire conversation, makes a mental note of this later, and smirks evilly. From here, the challenge plays out basically the same, with the only new thing happening being that now when Lashana locks Heather in the fridge, Alejandro would be able to convince everyone that they must work together as a team, and he would get Heather out of the fridge. He even makes Heather apologize while giving her a threatening look, since they had talked a while ago about not making herself a target for elimination, so Heather quietly apologizes. Cody watches this all happen and has a confessional where he casts suspicion on Alejandro, saying that he seemed like a real smooth talker and maybe he's more dangerous than he seems. And since Heather never got locked in the fridge, she wouldn't have come back to Beth already setting up the table, she would have set up the table with Beth, and Beth would have set up the Tiki Idol and told Heather about getting it from Boney Island, and then Heather connects the dots and tells her about the curse. Beth panics, but Heather strikes a deal with Beth that if she stays loyal to the Alliance, then Heather will keep quiet about the curse she has. Beth is scared of being targeted for this and agrees to Heather's terms, but from there, I think the food plays out the same. Obviously, Owen doesn't eat the ribs now, but the flambe is mainly what caused the Gophers the challenge since it almost killed Chris, and the flambe turned out bad because of Lindsay, who is still here, so the Gophers would still lose the challenge. Now, for the vote, there is an alliance of five that could work together to vote one of them out, but Alejandro heard the conversation that Cody, Trent, and Lashana had, and knows that if they continue investigating much longer, they could track get back to him, which would be terrible for his game. So Alejandro wants to nip this problem in the butt before it gets too big, and hearing the potential people they were suspicious of, it leaves himself, Heather, and Justin. And obviously Alejandro wouldn't want to try to blame himself, and even though he plans to turn against Heather at some point, it's way too early to do that. Plus Heather could tell everyone that Alejandro actually did it on her way out, since she knows Alejandro did it since they came up with the plan together. And that leaves Justin, which kind of works out anyways, as Justin not wanting to flirt with girls to help Alejandro get more allies kind of makes him useless to Alejandro, except just as an extra vote. But one more vote in his pocket versus the possibility of everyone finding out that Alejandro did it and having everybody against them is a trade he's willing to take. Alejandro tells Heather about the whole situation and how they have to frame Justin for the Gwen thing. Heather is a little panicked but asks what his plan is, and Alejandro just tells her to have a conversation with Justin where she's upset and crying to Justin about something dumb and keep going until Justin gets annoyed with her, and he'll do the rest. Heather is a bit confused but goes off to find Justin to do the plan. Alejandro goes off to find Cody, Trent, and Lashana all hanging out together and tells them that he overheard their conversation they and 
thinks it's time someone gets revenge served to them. He tells them that he's the one who burned the diary and explains he did it because Justin made him. Justin was also the one who put all those lies in Gwen's diary. Alejandro admits that in a moment of weakness he protected Justin since he thought he was still a good guy, but realizes now he's a cold person to do such a thing to Gwen. In fact, Justin even roped Heather into all this, blackmailing her once she figured out that the lines in the diary were a lie. They are a bit shocked but don't fully believe him yet, which in turn Alejandro tells them to follow him. Alejandro pulls them into a nearby bush where Heather and Justin are located. Heather is crying to Justin, telling him that she's so sorry and hopes he'll give her another chance. Justin is confused by the entirety of her actions but tells her that it's fine and it's not that big a deal. Heather promises to keep all of it a secret and Justin thanks her a walk. Cody, Trent, and Lashana are shocked since they've never seen Heather cry or show any emotion of sadness. Alejandro explains to them that Heather is a nice girl and that's why he's always defending her, but Justin really weighs on her with his manipulation. He tells her every day that if she reveals his secret then she's as good as gone. With their theory earlier lining up with Justin being the one to do it for ruthless reasons like him not being able to persuade Gwen with his looks, matching what Alejandro is showing and telling them, they all think that makes sense and Trent even remembers the day after the Gwen boot where Heather told him that she was just trying to help him out which he now believes even more. So in a 5 free vote, Justin is voted out. Justin is shocked at being eliminated looking towards Heather and Alejandro who both look away from him, making Justin upset as he slumps his way to the dock of shame. While Justin is walking to the dock, Katie catches up with him and says she feels terrible about dodging him all day and that she was just trying to focus on the game but really wanted to talk to him. Justin puts a finger to her mouth and tells her it's okay and he understands and asks if once the game is over maybe they can get to know each other more, which Katie agrees with. Justin smiles as he continues to walk away eliminated while Katie waves to him as the boat drives away. Alejandro and Heather would be hanging out together alone laughing about what they accomplished yesterday, but Alejandro gets a serious tone as he tells Heather that part of his work required making people think she was actually nice. So at least for today it would be nice if she could make an effort to not be completely mean to people. Heather is rude about this and says she's not mean and Alejandro asks her again if she can do it for him. Heather blushes at Alejandro's phrasing and looks away while saying she'll try. For the first part of the challenge, Duncan and DJ were selected for the best to compete and they're both still here and I think they are a good mix. Well, they're a bad mix, but that's the point of the producers to make teams that are dysfunctional, and they're both very different because DJ is really nice and Duncan's really mean. And because Heather was, was part of this duo originally, she would compete here if her worst match, which is clearly Alejandra because they bicker so much. DJ would climb again for the bass, meaning he would give his bunny to Jeff, and that would still happen later. I think it's kind of hard to tell between Heather and Alejandro who would climb, because Alejandro was shown in World Tour to be a great climber during the Egypt challenge, but I don't think Heather could support him with the backup line if he slipped. So I guess Heather would climb instead, and I don't really think she has much chance of climbing well. I know Gwen did really well, but Heather is extremely bossy and artificial in the first season, not wanting to do hard things for challenges, and seeing as she didn't want to run in the second challenge of high hills, she definitely wouldn't want to climb in high hills. She would give it a try, but DJ would get to the top first and win the first point for the best. After the next parent challenge, everyone who was there originally is here, so there shouldn't be any change. Jeff and Bridget would still win for the bass, getting them a second point. And I know in the original that Trent gets poisoned for the rest of the challenge, but that is just so messed up on the rewatch, on so many levels. It's really fucked to have that on a kid show. So since this is my what if, I decided that they gave Trent a meal to eat that was actually safe to eat and acted like what Lindsay did well before telling them that Lindsay's meal was terrible, so they gave him a safe meal to eat. Since poisoning the cast is too far and they still wanted to have a 10 shot of eating of Trent eating the meal. I mean, in the very next challenge, they switch around the arrow shooting shooting at the apple to the apple shooting at the arrow for the safety of the cast, so the fact that they made Trent eat poisonous food is definitely crossing a certain level of safety they try to hold. I know this isn't accurate, and I even made sure to not use him for the rest of the challenges to technically follow the logic of the actual show that he, you know, could be medically injured that way. But really, this is so messed up, and I want to act like the show wouldn't do that, at least in my universe. Now, this is where the challenge gets weird, because originally the last three rounds were all for one point. So like the first two rounds, this round between Heather and DJ's duo was one point, Trent and Jeff's duo was one point, and then there was last round was three rounds, and then the best of those three rounds is going to be for the last point. But if it's all for one point, then it doesn't matter, because the best already won two points. So that one point wouldn't be able to give the Gophers the win. But because it's way too early to end the challenge in my mind, I think Chris would alter the round so that the last three rounds all individually count for points. So now the best have two out of the five points remaining, and the Gophers can still win. And the challenge continues. For the next challenge, I decided to have Sadie and Tyler as a pair, since Jock and bigger person is something that the production will play into, and then Lashana and Cody. 
Just because Bev gets along with both of them well, and also Lashana and Cody are very different personalities, basically polar opposites, so yeah, I think they work as a pair. And because both original shooters are here, I imagine they'd still be shooters. Lashana, Sadie. Lashana would hit Cody a fair amount of times, but eventually she would hit the arrow like the original. And Sadie, like the original, would continue shooting even after the challenge is over, hurting Tyler a lot. Upsetting the team as Sadie went way too far. Lindsay would instantly be worried about Tyler and go to check on him. Heather gets suspicious of this, but Alejandro, remembering the deal he made with Lindsay and Tyler last episode, decides to help them out by covering for them, telling Heather that Lindsay's allowed to not want him to be badly damaged and not have a crush on him at the same time. And Heather, remembering what Alejandro told her at the beginning of the episode, decides that she should probably stay quiet about this to not ruffle feathers with Lindsay. Now the next part of the challenge is the blind trapeze with the electric eel lake beneath. While walking to the challenge, Heather would try to be nice to Beth again following what Alejandro told her to do, and because she figures Beth can be a long-term ally since she has dirt on her. But Beth is very resistant, saying that she knows what Alejandro told everyone and Justin sounded awful, but she knows that Heather was always mean, and this fake act of her trying to be nice now isn't gonna fool her. Heather glares at her and has a confessional just simply saying, wrong move. Jeff would have lost DJ's bunny and told him during this challenge, prompting Duncan to go find DJ a replacement bunny. Pairs for this would be Katie and Harold since they're the only ones left with the best who haven't competed, plus Preppy Girl and Nerd work as a good contrast team. And Beth is the only one who hasn't competed for the Gophers, so that means anybody else could compete with her, and her worst pair is clearly Heather. Harold would swing for the bass, telling Katie when to jump, and just like Bridget, they would do it successfully. Heather would be able to convince Beth that Heather is the one who should swing, since Beth has terrible eyesight and if her glasses happen to fall off while she's swinging upside down, then they would be screwed. Beth doesn't fully trust Heather, but agrees with the flow of logic, and even says in confessional that trusting Heather to catch her is shady, but Beth's a very well-rounded circus performer who can do their tricks, so this seems like a gimme to have her do the jumping part. I'll be honest, I completely made that up about Beth. I thought I heard about it in the wiki at some point. I was wrong. But she is seen to do circus tricks like spinning flaming bars, and her title is the wannabe who will do anything for attentions, so it seems like it fits her character in a way that makes her more interesting. You could completely scrap this of her being a circus performer if you want to be realistic, because even without this, I still think Beth would reluctantly agree with Heather's plan. And Heather being spiteful of what Beth said earlier and not thinking of her as an ally, decides to let her fall. The electric eel on purpose. And this would end the challenge. Since the Bass have now earned 3 out of the 5 challenges, the result of the final challenge doesn't matter since they would still have the lead. So the challenge would be cut short and the Bass would be proclaimed the winners. And this does mean that when Duncan gets DJ's replacement bunny, he would just show him to DJ later in the day, and this also means that nobody was at the medical tent where Duncan passed by while getting DJ a new bunny, meaning that only the audience will see Duncan getting DJ a bunny to show that Duncan has a heart, but no one else would know. Before the elimination ceremony vote, Heather would gather up the team to have a group huddle. Everyone's a little annoyed by this since they think it's on necessary and it better be important. Heather assures them that it is and asks Beth if she has anything she'd like to show to the group. At first Beth is confused but realizes what Heather is aiming at and Beth is shocked. Heather says either Beth can confess or Heather will confess for her. Beth pulls out the tiki statue from her pocket. At first the group is confused why the statue matters at all but Heather also makes Beth say where she got it from and once Beth says Boney Island the entire group gasps as they realize she's been cursed. Cody asks Heather how she knew and Heather tells everyone that she found out last episode but kept it secret for Beth but after Justin was eliminated she doesn't want to keep secret from the group anymore, and she thinks the cause of their losing streak it was caused by Beth's curse. Group all thinks it makes sense because ever since she got the curse, the team hasn't won a challenge yet, and at the elimination ceremony and a 6 1, eh maybe 5-2 because Lindsay might vote for even, no, Lindsay would vote for Heather. Okay, 6-1 vote with Heather in the bottom two, Beth is eliminated. Lashana gives her goodbye saying that she's sorry she got the curse because she was great to be around. Heather also tries to give her a goodbye, but Beth just glares at her as she boards the boat of losers. Bridget would be holding a girls alliance meeting in the Bass's female cabins and talk to mainly Sadie about how what she did yesterday was really bad and she could have got eliminated for it if they went to elimination. Bridget says she needs Sadie to listen to the team more and work a little less to stop trying to show off, like how she did yesterday. For the first part of the challenge, the teams have to hold a canoe above their head as a team until somebody drops out. And I think the first person to drop out would be Sadie. Both Sadie and Katie seem like people who wouldn't be the best at applying themselves to physical challenges, and I think Sadie is out over Katie, since Sadie is the shortest of the cast at 5 foot 3. I'd also like to thank this guy, I don't know how to pronounce his name, so sorry about that, but he's the one who has this video of all their heights which allowed me to actually confirm how tall Sadie was, since actual sight's based off the top of her pigtails, which, you know, doesn't help me. <laughs> so yeah, thanks a ton to him. And for reference, the next shortest person on the Bass team is Katie, but she is 5 foot 9, which is a full 7 inches over Sadie. I think the cats would strain their arms at a certain point to hold the canoe, and Sadie would get annoyed and tired of being short at the challenge and give up. Bridget would be upset since she didn't realize that when she told Sadie to work less, Sadie took it as not working at all, and gets annoyed feeling like she's underappreciated in the female Bass Alliance. Also, never notice that Jeff and Duncan are still bullying Harold, as there's no reason for them not to. Originally, Courtney confronted Jeff 
Jeff and Duncan when they bullied Harold in the cafeteria calling them childish, but now I think Bridget would confront them. And since she was already annoyed by Sadie, she would be even more on edge telling them both to stop and that they have to work as a team. Duncan wouldn't care and brush it off, but Jeff hearing Bridget say that would realize he's kind of been a dick to Harold and would feel bad. For the next challenge, it requires the cast to write an essay about how much they love Chef. And originally, DJ and Trent get eliminated here, and I think they still would. But now I would also add Katie, Tyler, and Lindsay to this batch that gets eliminated. Since they all aren't the brightest bulbs. And the next challenge for the mud obstacle course, Harold gets eliminated, and I could definitely see Cody also getting eliminated. This is also where Duncan provokes Chef more and gets himself punished in the boat outhouse. Now, I am talking about the next episode where Lashana gets her love letters. She mentions them as if she's seen them before, like potentially in this episode. And since she isn't doing anything this episode, plus the plot with Gwen and Bridget trying to figure out who's writing them next episode can't happen since Gwen isn't here, I figure both Trent and Cody would approach Lashana, who has a love letter in her hand looking all gushy. As Trent and Cody approach, she reveals the letter to them, saying she found it outside the girls' cabin this morning. Trent asks Lashana how she knows it's for her, and Lashana says there's only three girls on the gopher side. Lindsay's got it bad for Tyler, and he isn't exactly the scholarly type that would write a haiku, and they all chuckle at the idea of someone having a crush on Heather because she's so bossy. So Cody agrees that only leaves her. Trent asks if she has any idea who could have written it, and Lashana says she hasn't really thought about it like that, as they list off the guys who could have done it. They can obviously remove Cody and Trent. It can't be Tyler because Tyler's with Lindsay. Jeff's got it bad for Bridget. This leaves Duncan, DJ, Alejandro, and Harold. And like Bridget and Gwen, they would all instantly write off Harold as having any level of charm slash romantic abilities. Lashana isn't too interested in the Bass guys, but is definitely interested in the prospect of Alejandro writing it. Lashana thanks them for helping her out, as Cody and Trent say they'll work together to try and ask around. And Cody being a kinda smart guy would instantly nose goes for having to talk to Duncan, and and Trent groans as he heads over to the boathouse. Trent knocks on the door to the boathouse with food in his hand as a peace offering slash excuse to talk to Duncan. Duncan takes it while asking why he's here and that his team probably wouldn't be happy with him talking to Duncan. Trent agrees but says that even someone like him doesn't deserve to starve. Duncan thanks him while sarcastically calling him a great guy. Trent catches onto the sass and decides to get this over with by just asking him if he has an interest in anyone left in the game. Duncan says not really while acknowledging that he thinks Heather and Lindsay are hot but no strings attached. Trent figured this and stands up to leave. Duncan stops him before he leaves since he's actually kinda lonely and asks him if he can stay a bit longer. Trent feels kinda bad for him in the boathouse all alone, even though he thinks he deserves it. Trent is shown to be a really nice guy, so he sits back down to talk with Duncan. Mostly it's about why Duncan chooses to be such a bad guy, and Duncan keeps his walls up just saying that Juvie isn't a very accepting place for weakness or kindness. And, Tr and Trent tells him that he's not in Juvie and that being nice could help him out for a change. Duncan tots his kindness as magical-esque message, and Trent decides to actually leave this time since he knows he's not getting anywhere with Duncan. Duncan again feels bad and realizes that he messed up again like when he got himself in the boat house. Cody doesn't have any luck with getting DJ to say he likes Lashana or anyone, so he writes him off too. The challenge will continue, and it's unclear when Lashana and Bridget got eliminated, but neither of them are in the final challenge, meaning that they got eliminated at some point, so... And I'm pretty sure the Gophers can take this, since all the bats here pass out pretty quickly during this, and Alejandro could easily outlast Duncan and Jeff. Given in All Stars, he spends half the season upside down while walking on his hands, and I don't think he'd have much trouble staying upside down by hanging on a tree. After the challenge, Jeff talks with Harold, saying he's genuinely sorry about everything today, even even putting his hands up showing he comes in peace. Harold is obviously not buying it, but Jeff gives a sincere apology saying he doesn't know why he did what he did, since he does think Harold actually has some wicked sick skills and is a pretty cool guy. Harold is still a bit on edge but puts his guard down, and Jeff tells him that he will vote with him tonight, and that he promises in bro code he won't put his name down. Harold smiles and agrees, meaning that he won't rig the votes later since he has no reason to now. But he also couldn't target Duncan since Jeff and DJ obviously wouldn't vote for him, and it would immediately take him out of good graces with Jeff if he rigged the votes against Duncan. So they all vote out the person they agree to be the biggest nuisance on the team, which is Sadie. Both of being unreasonably aggressive last episode and basically giving up instantly wouldn't sit well with the team. Besides, they know the merge is probably coming soon and letting both Katie and Sadie make merge seems like a bad idea since they are way too close. Now I do think that Duncan would vote Harold, but Harold, Jeff, DJ, and Tyler would all vote Sadie. And Bridget, Katie, and Sadie are all working together, but I think they'd lean Duncan more than anybody else. Duncan is definitely a bigger drag on the team and would think that someone like Tyler and Harold would vote with them so it seems like the safest vote. Plus Bridget really doesn't like the influence Duncan has on Jeff. Because of this vote division and a 4-3-1 vote, Sadie is eliminated. Katie is obviously extremely distraught as they have a tearful goodbye that is pretty similar to the original, and Bridget would be fuming at Jeff since she thought that she could trust him, but he just took out one of her allies. Jeff is dumbfounded as he thought he did a good thing by making up with Harold, but the other decision he still made was the wrong move in Bridget's eyes, and he sighs as he feels regret. Now, all of the next challenge plays out exactly the same, since everyone who was here for the challenge is still here. Trent and DJ are still here for the first challenge,
challenge. Lashana and Jeff are still here for the second challenge. And Lindsay and Harold are still here for the last challenge. And then Duncan's still here to drive for Lindsay. And Heather's still here to drive for Harold. DJ would beat Trent. Lashana would beat Jeff. And Lindsay would beat Harold when he gets distracted by a certain distracting presence. Heather's boobs. So the Bass would still lose. But I'm going to first talk about the character dynamics that would happen during this episode. Before the vote. Cody and Trent would both talk with Lashana before the challenge and tell them that DJ and Duncan are out of the running for being the one who wrote the love letters, which only leaves Alejandro. Lashana is happy since Alejandro is obviously very good looking and also extremely charming, so during the entire day she sends signals towards Alejandro, which she mostly brushes off as he doesn't understand why she's doing it, and Heather gets extremely jealous as Lindsay calls her out at multiple points for being jealous, but Heather denies it. And near the end of the day, Lashana flirts with him again, saying that his love letters were so cute, and now Alejandro connects some dots that someone must have been flirting with Lashana as, as an anonymous admirer, and he knows it's obviously not himself since he didn't write the letters, but also sees this as a great opportunity to get Lashana under his thumb as a loyal ally. And he also sees how much it annoys Hever, and says that if he continues flirting with Lashana, that will throw her game off. And it's also due part that Alejandro likes seeing Hever be jealous for him, but he doesn't admit that in the confessional. Jeff would talk with Bridget near the beginning of the episode, maybe just before he goes on the bull ride, and wants to talk to her about yesterday how he tried taking her advice to be nice to Harold since it was good, but she still got mad at him and he's kind of confused why. Bridget is thankful that Jeff stopped bullying and tells him that she was just kind of upset about losing Sadie since they were close, and she isn't mad at him and is actually proud of him for making such a big change when he realized he was doing something bad. And it shows that he's a good guy, which she really likes. Jeff gets excited as this is really the first time that Bridget has told him in any capacity to his face that she likes him. Katie would be acting really sad for most of the episode, feeling upset about losing Sadie and Justin in such a short amount of time and feels like giving up. Bridget spends most of the episode trying to help her, but Katie just continues acting helpless until after the last challenge with the Bass lose. Katie is in the girl's cabin with Bridget telling her that she might just quit. This is when Bridget gets tired of this and slaps her across the face. Bridget is instantly apologetic since she isn't a violent person, but Katie shakes it off and tells her that Bridget is right and that Sadie and Justin were both wanting to continue so she has to be strong for them, and even pulls Bridget in for a tight hug while Bridget again apologizes profusely for the slap and is also confused why it worked so well. After that mouthful, now let's get to the actual vote. I imagine now that Bridget and Jeff made up, they would vote together and Bridget would agree as long as it wasn't for Katie since Bridget is still trying to work with Katie because she's Bridget's strongest ally. And Harold clearly dropped the ball on the day's challenge and that doesn't sit very well with the team so they would plan to vote him out. But Harold would be able to catch wind of this plan and would be especially mad at Jeff who just said he was sorry to Harold and is already planning to eliminate him again. And because Harold is mad that they are choosing to eliminate him over anyone else like Duncan who has a terrible attitude, Katie who's been a downer this episode, and Tyler who's just terrible at challenges, Harold does something out of spite and anger. He rigs the votes. But the question is against who? There are three candidates in my opinion and they are Duncan, Jeff, and Bridget. Duncan because mm, obvious. Jeff because he just liked the Herald which really annoys him since he thought he could trust him. And Bridget because like the original where he rigs the votes against Courtney, Duncan's lover. Instead of Duncan, Bridget naturally goes into possible contention by association as Jeff's romantic interest. But I do think I can cross off Bridget since she's been fairly nice to Harold, not doing or saying anything mean to him, and he's even nice to him at times in the original. Meanwhile, there were a fair amount of times where Courtney mistreated Harold. The choice between Jeff and Duncan is a tough decision for me to make because I could really see it going either way. However, I eventually landed on Duncan. Just because there are actually a fair amount of pros to keeping Jeff, main one is that Jeff would still potentially work with Harold and could forgive him. I mean, it's heavily unlikely, but it's much more likely than it would be with Duncan, because Duncan would have never worked with Harold in Island. Also, Duncan is a spawn to all the bullying towards Harold, so you would think that maybe if he got rid of Duncan, then all his mistreatment towards him would fade away too. Duncan and Harold are in the bottom two of the vote, with Duncan acting cocky and telling Harold he had a good run, but Duncan is stunned as Harold receives the last marshmallow. Duncan can't believe it and instantly starts accusing one of the guys of flipping. The guys all start to slowly glare at each other, believing what Duncan's saying since it's the only reasonable conclusion. And the episode ends with Harold looking mischievously in the camera as it flashbacks to him rigging the votes. The teams would now be dissolved into boys versus girls. And I talked about this in my last video, and I think the same thing would happen. Cody would get her on the girls team to even out the numbers, and because the show is a kid's show, and jokes like questioning a smaller, scrawny guy's masculinity is up there, so yeah, it's still gonna happen. I mentioned it in my last video. Yeah, yeah. But for the beginning part where the genders meet together to bond in the cabins, Cody would still go with the guys. Since he is a dude, and it'd be weird to have him in the girls area, and like, kind of invasive. But in the challenge itself, he would compete with the girls. Jeff and Bridget would be on fairly good terms since they made up last episode, and even though the whole Duncan thing happened, Happened, neither of them really care since they were both kind of done with his bad attitude and they just want to appreciate each other now. Bridget and Katie would head to the gopher's girl side and Heather and Lashana's fight would still happen and eventually lead to them forcing Katie and Bridget to choose a side. Both of them decide to choose
Yuzu's side at the same time, with Bridget stepping on Lashana's side, but Katie stepping on Heavy's side, since Heavy's offer of makeup persuaded her. They are both a bit shocked that the other chose the opposite side since they do want to work together, but in separate confessionals, Katie and Bridget both kind of say that they are very different and they can still be good friends, but ultimately maybe they should explore other options for longtime allies. The board side would be much more tense since all the bass guys are still on edge trying to figure out who betrayed the alliance to flip on Duncan, all quietly of course, just staring each other down. Cody eventually breaks the ice asking why they are all so tense, and this causes a full blown argument with everyone accusing each other and Harold also getting involved since they are basically talking about why he should have gone right in front of him. But Alejandro being the smooth talker he is, is able to make everybody calm down and say that they all must work together today to beat the girls, and Harold agrees with him seemingly wanting to avoid the further discussion of Duncan's elimination. All the guys cheer at Alejandro's speech. But Alejandro caught on to Harold's nervousness and thinks that he's hiding something and plans to figure out what. Now for the actual challenge. During the first round of bull testicles, I think the girls take it. Alejandro was shown in World Tour to be terrible at eating gross things, and the rest of the guys couldn't eat the testicles anyways, so Katie could definitely be a liability, but Bridget would be able to convince Katie, like how she convinces Lindsay, to calmly eat the food. Cody would resist heavily not wanting to do that to the bowl, but the girls would be able to threaten him into doing it. Also, Jeff would still help Bridget to eat the meat, and this would cause the Bass boys to look at him oddly since it seems like he's betraying them which adds to the possibility that he betrayed Duncan, but Alejandro glares at them, silently reminding him what he said earlier. For the next course, it is pizza with live anchovies, grasshoppers, and jellyfish sauce. One thing to know is that Lashana was the one from this round originally who couldn't finish the meal, and Alejandro would know that he couldn't eat it because of his weak stomach, so he would instead try manipulating the girls into doing worse so the guys can win by just making the most progress. He does this by subtly messing with Lashana about the food, and this works well not only because Alejandro is extremely smooth talker, but because he's also got a good thing going with Lashana, so she takes his word to heart. And while Lindsay is eating her pizza in her meditation stance, Alejandro would throw her off by constantly mentioning things that she likes to throw her out of the trance. Like saying there's a sale at the mall and there's free shopping sprees for girls named Lindsay. This could be seen as villainous, but nobody catches on just thinking that it's clever, except for Cody, who narrows his eyes, seeming a little suspicious, but not enough to do anything. Because of Alejandro doing this, Lashana and Lindsay can't finish their food, while all the guys but Alejandro finish the food, so the guys get the point for making more progress. Heather is mad at Alejandro for messing with the girls and leans over to him saying that he's a really bad alliance member. Alejandro whispers back saying he wasn't aware that being on different teams kept them intact, and asks her if she missed him. She fake belches while saying that him and his dumb boys are going down. Alejandro ponders for a second before saying to her why don't they make it more interesting and offers a deal that whichever one of their team wins they can ask any favor from the other one down the line. I explained that really poorly. Basically if the boys won then Alejandro can ask a favor of Heather down the line and vice versa. Heather agrees to the deal but has her fingers crossed behind her back. The next course is worm spaghetti and DJ actually had a really great strategy for this meal blindfolding himself and all the other guys and close pinning their noses so they can't smell the meal. And I know that Alejandro is terrible with gross food but DJ's strategy is like a real life strategy that allows people to eat food while tasting it very little, basically none actually. And Alejandro would want to be able to prove to the boys that he's a strong leader and he'd want to win the deal he just made with Heather. So the boys would be able to win this round as well with that strategy. The next course is, I don't even know how to describe it, it's just gross soup man. <laughs> and just like DJ, Bridget had a great strategy for this round, funneling the soup down Lindsay's throat, instantly giving the girls the point, for some reason. I mean the logic for every other round was that the entire team had to finish, but for some reason in the original Lindsay Lindsay finishes this, and then the girls just win. It doesn't matter, it would still happen, I guess. So the girls have two points, boys have two points. And the next course is Dolphin Hot Dogs. And coincidentally, the two people who just won their team points, DJ and Bridget, are both people in the original who refuse to eat this meal, causing Chris to make a tiebreaker of having one representative from each team chug shots of blended cockroach. And it really doesn't matter who the boys send in here. The girls send in Lashana originally, and Owen's not here now, so the guys would have to send in someone else. But it really doesn't matter who they send in. For reference, in the original, Owen won it for the guys against Lashana, but Lashana only lost to Owen by like three shots out of a lot of shots. So without Owen, I don't think the guys would have any chance to beat her, no matter who they send in against Lashana. Meaning that the girls win the reward. After the challenge, Alejandro would pull Harold aside to comfort him, saying that he notices a certain uneasiness from him and ask him if anything's wrong. Harold knows what Alejandro is sensing and says no while not looking in his eyes. Alejandro tells him that he noticed he didn't really make any friends on the Bass team, but Alejandro respects him for beating him in the dodgeball challenge and wants to work with him. But he needs to be able to trust him so he needs to hear the truth from Harold or they're going to continue working together. Harold pauses for a bit but eventually breaks and tells Alejandro that he rigged the vote against Duncan and feels terrible about it. Alejandro is genuinely shocked since he didn't think Harold had that in him, 
but comforts Harold saying he, that he did what he had to and that he's glad Harold told him the truth. He sticks his hand out for a deal, sealing their partnership, and Harold accepts and shakes his hand. And there we go, that is the first part of what if Alejandro and Sierra were an island. Again, sorry for this format, I'm not really big on like making people wait for, you know, two parts. I'm someone that kind of gets obsessive when I watch something and I want to finish it entirely in one sitting. So I do get that urge of why people wanted a one part, but there's just a lot of things in my life right now and I don't really have the time to make the second part without it taking like another two weeks. Which as I said before is bad for my channel and also just like not a very effective way to keep the story going. And also I think it was kind of fun last time when I uploaded the first part and people only watched the first part without knowing the second part and people talked about, you know, what theories they had going into the merge, what they wanted to happen, what they liked seeing in the pre-merge. And I feel like it was kind of a fun way to get a lot of discussion going before actually seeing what happened. So, you know, maybe it could be cool. Yeah, I'm glad you stayed this long and I hope that when part two comes out, you'll check it out. Bye. <laughs>